Marvel Studios is currently fixing the MCU. There are meetings and planning happening right now with the goal of making audiences get excited again about Marvel Cinematic Universe movies. And we have new leaked information from insiders explaining exactly what is going on behind the scenes. And so in this video, let's break down these new updates. And I also want to speculate about how these updates will actually manifest in the different projects. I believe this information is accurate as it comes from from Daniel RPK, but it's yet to be determined whether or not this strategy will work. We don't know if this will actually turn things around for the MCU, but at least we know what they are trying to do. Okay, so let's first start with the Disney Plus content. I think the first thing to keep in mind is despite me and many others railing on about how Marvel Studios should cancel some of the projects they have in development, they are not going to do that. And according to Daniel, most everything that is in development currently will be kept as a limited series. Mostly this refers to Vision Quest and Wonder Man. Apparently Nova was also going to be a limited series, but it has now been shelved and Nova as a character is likely being saved for a movie now. Now, Daniel next goes on to say that Marvel Studios is currently deciding what to do with the Children's Crusade. Apparently they're torn between making it a series and making it the actual plot of the Young Avengers movie. And I guess you can read into this that yes, Marvel Studios is absolutely still going to do a Young Avengers movie. Now there's definitely a lot I have to say about this, but let's just kind of finish what is in this new report when it comes to the television over at Marvel Studios. Apparently, Miss Marvel Season 2, Moon Knight Season 2, and She-Hulk Season 2 are being talked about to return, but Feige wants them to be longer seasons. Now, a lot of people took this and ran with it, saying that Miss Marvel Season 2 is in development, She-Hulk Season 2 is in development. They are not in development. They are currently being discussed behind the scenes, and I think the main thing is, should we do a Season 2, and can we do a Season 2 that will not be a limited series? The real point here, and the thing to keep in mind, is that Feige he seems to believe that the limited series format is a part of the problem as far as like why these shows aren't connecting with fans. So the future of Marvel television on Disney Plus seems to really be longer seasons, not these limited series, but like, I guess, bigger budgeted, longer stories. Daniel says that Feige is looking at what other characters could support an interesting and again, long form show, not this limited series format. Elsa Bloodstone, Alpha Flight, Runaways, certain members of the X-Men, Ghost Rider, Jessica Jones, and Punisher are all being considered for these longer shows. And apparently the big thing here is they want to do grounded characters. And I guess that kind of makes sense just given the budget, it would be easier to do a ground level character, especially if you're doing more than six to eight episodes. So that all makes sense. Now let's just kind of stop for a second before we get into the movies and talk about this. Number one, I think it is such a mistake to continue ahead with Vision Quest and with Wonder Man. I understand from their perspective why they would want to continue production. They likely already have scripts. They've already cast for it. They're more or less ready to go for these shows, but it also feels like something that they're just not willing to let go of. I mean, they seem to believe that the limited series format is a big problem. It doesn't allow them to tell enough story to do a good enough job to make these shows sort of stand on the level of what the best MCU movies have stood on. And yet they're just going to do these next two, Vision Quest and Wonder Man, in that format that they don't think is the best way to make television. Now, a big part of this report also focuses on the Children Crusade and the Young Avengers. This seems to be a super high priority for Feige and something that he really wants to do. And I don't understand this. As a fan, I'm not connected to any of the Young Avengers. I mean, Kate Bishop is cool, Miss Marvel's fun, but I don't feel a connection to any of the other characters, I think it is absolutely crazy to want to continue to do Young Avengers when the setup movie for that seems to be the lowest box office, one of the worst failures in the history of Marvel. This would be Miss Marvel. A lot of the other projects that include these characters are not doing well, like Quantum Mania and even the Miss Marvel show. And I absolutely love Iman as 
friggin' Ms. Marvel. But nobody watched that show, man, and nobody watched the movie that she's in. What is this obsession over at Marvel Studios to continue down a path just because they started to go down it despite all sorts of signs from the audience to tell them to, like, turn back now? Like, it seems like the audience is speaking, and Marvel Studios is not listening. I gotta be honest with you guys, I don't even love the idea of them wanting to do longer shows. I personally don't see how that fixes the problem. A lot of the Marvel shows are just ill-conceived. I feel like they're wrong from Jump Street. But I also feel like an important factor that's holding them back is that they can't really connect to the movies or other shows properly because there's just so much output going on over at Marvel Studios that they can't keep things connected in the way they used to. Maybe I'm crazy, but I just personally don't see how shifting into longer seasons and not having limited series solves the problem of what's going on on Disney+. Plus. I think if they stop creating so many shows, that will help, and I know Marvel is trying to do that as well. Now, I will say it is comforting to hear things like Ghost Rider being considered for a show, certain members of the X-Men being considered. Like, I would love a show with Gambit and Storm working for the Thieves Guild. Jessica Jones and Punisher and a lot of these other characters seem like great candidates for big time shows over on Disney Plus. But again, I just keep coming back to this thing where I'm like, I don't understand how doing a bigger show fixes the problem. Maybe they're looking at what they did with Loki season one and season two, and they understand that that's been better received by critics and fans because it really does feel like a part one and a part two to a longer story that makes sense. But I just, again, I don't see how this just making it much bigger uh, actually fixes that problem. Maybe I'm not understanding it. Okay, but now let's get into the movie side of things. This is really interesting. Daniel says in his report that they are looking for a director or different directors for the Kang Dynasty and for Secret War. Apparently the top picks are Sam Raimi and Aaron Moorhead and Justin Benson. Now, those last two names, those guys usually direct together. They have directed some Moon Knight. They have directed some Loki. But I still think it would be absolutely wild to just give them one of the next two Avengers movies. I don't think that's a good play. So I think it's probably going to be Sam Raimi or maybe some surprise people pick that we're not hearing about, but of these names, I just think Sam Raimi makes the most sense. Now, this part's really interesting. Daniel is saying that Marvel Studios is not dropping Kang, and they are watching very closely what's going to be happening in Jonathan Major's court case. If he is found guilty, or I would imagine if even some bad stuff comes out in Discovery and just really makes him look bad, they will likely recast. Now, I know there was a report out there suggesting that Jonathan Majors had it in his contract that nobody else could play Kang. Well, if he's convicted or something crazy comes out in Discovery, they can absolutely turn that around. Like they could cancel that contract basically because of like an act of God of uh, force majeure. So they could probably void that contract in the case of him actually having legal action taken against him. Importantly, Daniel says that they are not going to be going away from Kang. If anything, Dr. Doom will become a co- villain. Now, that's really interesting because I think Daniel could have said all sorts of stuff here, and I don't think he had to bring up Dr. Doom at all. My impression is that by him bringing Dr. Doom up here, he is sort of corroborating the reports and the smoke that is suggesting that Marvel Studios is really taking a look at this situation, and they may well want to elevate Dr. Doom. By the way, I recently did a video suggesting that there's evidence that Dr. Doom was actually always going to be the villain of Secret Wars and likely a co-villain with Kang. Go check that video out. But I find this really interesting, like him just bringing Doom up and saying, if anything, Doom will be co-villain. I think that really speaks to the fact that Doctor Doom being elevated is something seriously being talked about over at Marvel Studios right now. Now, Daniel also says that Destin Daniel Crichton immediately began work on Shang-Chi 2 after not doing Kang Dynasty anymore. And that's really interesting to me. To me, that suggests that some of the Kang stuff that Destin was maybe working on 
in the Kang Dynasty is going to be put in Shang-Chi 2. A little bit later on, Daniel talks about how Shang-Chi 2 is a stepping stone towards Secret Wars, and we've heard that maybe that movie's gonna take place in the past, and they're gonna fight against a Kang variant, so that's all pretty cool. Now, this is where it gets really interesting, and I think this is really the strength of what Marvel Studios has coming in the next couple of years, and their real chance to turn this around. Daniel first talks about Deadpool 3. He talks about a lot of stuff we've already known, how important this movie is to Marvel Studios, but just a lot of emphasis here in this reporting from Daniel that Deadpool 3 is viewed as a movie that's gonna be so cool, it's gonna directly set up Secret Wars, and Marvel is hoping that the movie's going to be so fun, it is going to get audiences to be excited for Marvel movies again. Right now, it's just super obvious that they've been on this big decline and things are just not going well. So they're looking to sort of course correct beginning with Deadpool 3. He also talks about how we're going to understand what the TVA is actually trying to do leading up to Secret Wars in Deadpool 3, and it also is gonna talk about where everything is going past Secret Wars. Now, this is likely referring to the rumors that the TVA is going around the multiverse saving prime versions of heroes for a new Earth, and this new Earth is very likely to be the new MCU, a soft rebooted MCU, which will take place after Secret Wars. Daniel then goes on to talk about how Spider-Man 4, Shang-Chi 2, and in some ways, the Fantastic Four movie, they're also all going to be stepping stones for Secret Wars. Now, this is really interesting because we reported recently that Daniel had talked about how Spider-Man 4 was going to have multiversal elements and it was going to merge the Sony multiverse and the MCU multiverse. Now, Daniel recently came out and walked that back. He says that's not exactly what he meant and a I think a lot of people are taking that out of context, but by saying in this new report that Spider-Man 4 is gonna be a stepping stone for Secret Wars, he's still implying that there's huge multiversal stuff going on. So while Spider-Man 4 may not actually just combine both universes, it's very much still gonna have multiversal elements. Maybe these will be saved for the end of the movie in a post credit scene, but the film itself is going to be important for setting up Secret Wars. Shang-Chi 2, we already talked about it's very likely to have a lot of the earthbound avengers like maybe even the mcu 616 illuminati going back in time with shang chi to fight against a kang variant and this will obviously set up the major conflict of the kang dynasty and it's a really weird choice of words here where daniel's saying fantastic four in some ways will set up secret wars he's very likely talking about the rumors that the fantastic four movie is going to be taking place in a different year universe and at the end of their movie that universe will be destroyed and the fantastic four will arrive on new earth this is very likely to be the same place that wolverine and deadpool end up after Deadpool 3. I've heard there's gonna be a funny scene where they get pizza at Joe's Pizza at the end of Deadpool 3. That's totally different, but still kind of cool. Now, lastly, Daniel says that Eternals 2, Thor 5, Doctor Strange 3, and Black Panther 3 are in early development. Now, this is interesting. Firstly, I wanna say this is different than Miss Marvel Season 2, Moon Knight Season 2, and She-Hulk Season 2. Right now, Marvel is discussing whether or not to do any of those Season 2. But this new batch of movies that includes Eternals 2, Thor 5, Doctor Strange 3, and Black Panther 3, those are actually in early development. They are actually starting to create these movies. And I personally think it's safe to say a lot of those movies will be leading up to Secret Wars as well. Some of these movies may well take place after the Kang Dynasty comes out. And the big rumor there is that the entire multiverse will end up being destroyed at the end of Kang Dynasty, and we will have just New Earth or Battle World after that. Now, there's an old rumor that was talking about how Kevin Feige and Marvel Studios were considering doing a Battle World saga, and some of their projects were going to actually take place in a post-multiverse MCU within the new battle world universe or on new earth or whatever the status quo is for the multiverse 
after the Kang Dynasty. Or it's possible these are projects that are being developed that will take place after Secret Wars ends. But okay, so we just went over a whole bunch of stuff that let's talk about the movies. Then I wanna talk about this overall plan, what I think is good and what I think is bad. So when it comes to the movies, this is a much stronger way of doing things than I think what you have over in TV. I absolutely love the idea of directly setting up Secret Wars through various movies. This is something that we've been missing with the post-Infinity Saga MCU. Everything just feels so all over the place and there's no driving force of story for a shared group of characters in the same way that we had in phases two and three. And I think Deadpool 3 is the perfect movie to get this whole thing going. And from everything we've heard about Deadpool 3, it's gonna be amazing. It's going to be another Spider-Man, No Way Home, huge, oh my goodness, this cameo, that cameo, holy crap, they're doing such fun things. It's going to be that movie again. And Spider-Man 4 and Shang-Chi 2 are also great candidates to be multiversal stories moving forward. Now, don't get me wrong, when it comes to Spider-Man 4, I think a lot of us wanna see Kingpin, and we wanna see grounded Peter Parker, Tom Holland, actually just being Spider-Man and not, you know, mini Iron Man for once. But also you can't deny the fun we had in Spider-Man No Way Home. And you can't deny that a big part of Secret Wars is very likely to be connected to the Sony mythos and these different Spider-Men. So I'm really excited and I'm hoping that they drive some of that lore forward, have a dope Spider-Man movie and set the table perfectly for the Kang Dynasty and Secret Wars with Tom Holland's Spider-Man. Now the Fantastic Four is a huge huge question mark for me. I just made a video talking about how a lot of the leaks for that movie have me frankly worried and I remain worried about that movie but it's possible it'll all make sense once we finally see it and I like this concept of it setting up Secret Wars as well and I hope that is connected to Doctor Doom. Again Daniel is kind of hinting that Doctor Doom may well become a co-villain of the multiverse saga and of Secret Wars and if that happens oh man I just really think that could elevate the whole story and get a lot of fans to go crazy over this stuff. Also, Eternals 2, Thor 5, Doctor Strange 3, Black Panther 3, these all seem really cool to me. I see a lot of potential in each one of these movies, especially if they are also connected to the multiverse at large, crazy variants, and what is happening with New Earth and Secret Wars. That all sounds great. I guess the only worry is that some of the other movies that they have, mostly Thunder Thunderbolts and Captain America 4. Yeah, those movies cannot be stinkers. They also have to be freaking awesome. And if the movies begin to go really big, if they're really freaking awesome, if they get back to that goodness that we had in the Infinity Saga, and they really do a good job of setting up Secret Wars, I think that will turn things around. Because it really is all about Secret Wars, guys. That is just the culmination of all of these different franchises over the past 30 years. It's going to be super fun, nostalgic cameo freak fest with a a lot of dope possibilities that the writers, I am sure, are going to take advantage of. So I'm excited for that. Unfortunately, I think the plans on television are kind of crappy, and I also don't love this idea of doing a Young Avengers movie. I mean, that just seems really brain dead to me, and it just seems like they're not reading the room at all. So I don't know. I mean, I guess we'll just have to wait and see. What do you guys think of this crazy plan that Kevin Feige has to turn things around for the Marvel Cinematic Universe? You think it's going to work? What do you think is good? What do you think is bad? Let me know in the comment section below. And as I always say, I hope you are having an awesome and a nerdy day, and I'll see you in the next video.